way to get the screen bigger. I'm like, it's a button. It's like, it's a, it's a you got it, Mike? All right, I'm going to come in here. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of this. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to start with the MyFab value proposition on fixture carrier presentation. Okay, here we go. How do I change the pages? What are you reading? Okay, today we are going to review the most common water closet and lavatory fixture carriers. We're going to highlight the features and benefits of each of these products. We're going to video to calculate the value proposition to our customer. So let's start off with water closet overview. The most common carrier is the MC10. If you've got the green book in the US or the silver book in Canada, go to page 212. And there's a photo of the MC10. You can see that we have the faceplate with the legs, the faceplate's connected to the legs, the four studs with the yellow uh, plastic shields are around the studs so that we don't get mortar on the four studs. That's a nice advantage with MyFab. Then you've got a typical ABS carrier that's threaded into the faceplate, um, female threaded faceplate. Behind the faceplate, on the right there, you see the fitting. And poking up on top of the fitting is our two inch vent connection so that we can vent the connection. And right behind that uh, vent connection, you can barely see a threaded rod. And that's to anchor the fitting to the ground so that we don't get a cantilever effect in the event that we have a percher on the toilet. We wanna make sure that that back end is secured to the ground. On the right, we just popped up a photo of the MC-1027. That's on page 215 of the MPB book. 1027 and the 10 is we have an auxiliary inlet. The auxiliary inlet is on the left, right in front of the rear anchor threaded support. The vent is on the right. The advantage of the rear of the auxiliary inlet is that you have the ability to receive waste from a urinal or a if the carrier is in the female, the ladies' restroom with a closet, and then behind you have the men's room, the men's urinal could drain into that auxiliary inlet, or we could have a, a sink or lavatory either from the women's or the men's drain into the auxiliary inlet. The advantage of that is the installer doesn't have to make a separate connection to hook up the waistline to the pipe. They can take advantage of the two inch no hub auxiliary inlet connection that we offer. Then we have the MC10 2737 series long barrel. That's on page number 216 of our MPB book. <clears throat> the advantage of this carrier, the barrel, the fitting barrel is longer. It's 37 inches. We used to make that 36 inches but we now make it 37. Why? Because typically the dimension between two toilets is 36. And we had contractors that said in a battery of toilets, when we have five toilets in a row, say in a movie theater, theater or a stadium, it would be easier if the fitting itself was long, but the men install them one end against the other and not have to cut and then install pipe between the typical 13 inch long barrel on the MC10 or the MC1027, uh, put pipe between the, the actual carriers. So some contractors really appreciate the labor savings to not have to cut pipe, but to use our standard long barrel carriers and just butt them against each other. 
Um, they're also always available with the auxiliary inlet. That's what that dash 27 means in that model number. Okay, so the MC10 is the most common water closet carrier. It elevates the toilet off the floor. That's why we have them. The toilets in most of our homes are on the ground. The toilets in most commercial public areas are off the ground. And the reason for that is it's easier for the maintenance staff to clean underneath the toilets and get any debris and dirt that has accumulated there. Fittings are available in left, right, and double. So why do we have left, right, and double? Well, typically, horizontal carriers are draining either to the left or to the right to the vertical pipe, which is called the stack. That's where all the waste is directed to, to this vertical pipe called the stack, and then the stack carries it, carries it down into the sewer. We have a double because you could have a toilet on the men's and on the ladies, so we can have one carrier. You can see the bottom right corner, there's a picture of a double carrier fitting. Um, we could have one carrier that serves both men and ladies. And left and right fittings are installed on both sides of the stack because we always want to drain to the stack. And from the stack, we go down. Fittings are back to back, uh, typically men and ladies uh, toilets. The MC10 is described as horizontal and adjustable. So let's talk about that. There's two stages of adjustment with an, ups, with an MC10. It can go number one, up or down. So the faceplate, you can see when you look at the faceplate, there are bolts on the front of the faceplate that bolt the faceplate to the legs. Those, one feature we have is that those bolts are adjustable from the front. Some of our competitors have those bolts on the side of the legs. So in order to move the faceplate up or down, and you would want to move the faceplate up or down in order to adjust your toilet height. In order to do that with some of our competitors, you must loosen those bolts on the side of the leg. And sometimes that leg is up against the stud and very awkward to get at. Because our faceplates have the bolts on the front, they're very easy to access, they're easy to loosen, and we can adjust that faceplate up or down. There's a track that the faceplate rides up or down within the, the legs of the carrier, uh, the, the two legs of the carrier. The other adjustment, oh, I went a little too far there. Um, the other adjustment is the fitting adjustment in, in the back of the faceplate. That fitting goes up or down. Why? Because imagine we have five toilets in a row in a movie theater. When you look at those five toilets, they're all going to be at the same height. There's not going to be a slope to those toilets. You're not going to have one higher than the other in a descending order to the stack. They're all going to be the same height. That's the adjustment with the faceplate to get that desired height. The second adjustment is behind the faceplate. We're adjusting the fitting up or down behind the faceplate to accommodate for slope. So we're sloping the waist to the stack. When we talk about a row of carriers, we talk about a battery, and that's what we're looking at here. This is a beautiful photo of MyFab's MC10 carriers installed at a contractor's prefab shop. And you can see how they have cut tape that goes between the carrier fittings, and then you can't see here, but they've got no-hub couplings connecting them all together. Um, so a row of carriers is called a battery. And the stack is the vertical waste pipe that goes through the floors in a multi-story building typically. Now, in order to know whether people need right or left-hand <clears throat> carriers, look at page 217 of your MPB book. Page 217 um, has a nice detail at the top of the page. And you can see we've got MC10Ls on the left, and we have MC10Rs on the right and they're going to the stack, which is in the middle. And within the stack is the MC13 vertical carrier. We'll talk about that in a second. So here's our value proposition on the MC10. Number one, the bolts that connect the, leg, the legs to the front, not from the side. Big time saver benefit. 
all bolts have a built-in washer. That's a key advantage. In our, in our early days, we made bolts with a separate loose washer. And a lot of contractors told us that that's time consuming, they can lose the washers. So we've changed that and that bolt that connects the faceplate um, to the fitting and the, um, the faceplate to the legs has an integral washer to it. We have the same faceplate, whether it's used for a siphon jet, which is most common, or a blowout toilet. And if we go back to page, um, on page 10, in the, uh, sorry, page 212 of the MPB book, if you look in the very top left corner of page 212, there is a hole in the top middle of the faceplate. That is the tapping for a blowout. What we would do is invert or turn the faceplate upside down and then install the three bolt blowout toilet onto the faceplate. A siphon jet needs four bolts, but a typical um, blowout is gonna be a three bolt pattern. The faceplate has easy to break off tabs to set at common heights. Again, look at page 212 and top left corner, you can see the horizontal lines at the bottom of the faceplate. And those lines are there so that a contractor can break off the material at the bottom of the faceplate. If they need to get that faceplate down, they're in an elementary school, there's young children there, they don't want the toilet too high off the ground, then we break off the tabs at the bottom of the faceplate to get that faceplate lower. There's another good photo or picture of that on page 210 of the MPB book. On page 210, uh, bottom left corner, second detail up from the bottom, you can see where the, the tabs have been cut off the bottom of the faceplate to get that faceplate down. And there's some good dimensions on page 210 about typical rough-in dimensions and how many um, carriers we can have in a battery of fixtures. All of the legs on the MC-10 are 18 inches high. Uh, actually 17 and three quarters high. So whether the toilet is a standard toilet or an ADA for handicap use, we have enough vertical height in the legs to adjust the face plate up to get us to the ADA required height with one standard set of legs, no need for another leg. The legs are invertible. Some of our competitors have a dedicated right leg or left leg. With us, we don't. So Regardless of whether it's left or right, it can go in either position. It just makes it easier in the event something breaks or cracks <clears throat> or somebody needs a replacement, we can easily just get out the one leg, less confusion. The four studs that we saw at the beginning that have the yellow plastic protector around them, um, that's standard with us. We also include the, the nut on those studs. We do that so the contractor doesn't have to take the time to work with loose nuts and thread them onto those four studs. The four studs come out of the box with the yellow protector around the threads and a nut on each stud saves time. We have more value proposition here. All of our legs have a one inch slot uh, have a slot one inch on center from the ground. And that's best seen on page 212, top left corner, page 212. <clears throat> you can see the little cutout at the bottom of the, of the leg. And that center line of the cutout to the bottom is one inch. And we've done that because contractors have said in a prefab situation, I typically have inch and a half angle iron. And I want to place the carriers after I've assembled them or during assembly into this angle iron rail that could be 10, 20 feet long. And then when I'm all assembled, I'm going to lift that whole battery, that whole assembled system onto a flatbed and take it to the job site. So we put in that notch at the bottom of the feet, you can see top left corner page 212, to allow them to secure via a bolt the angle iron to the feet to hold the whole system together. Our fittings are unique in that we pack them in a box with the rear anchor support bracket, 
Typically, our competitors are shipping carrier fittings loose in a crate, not packaged. <coughs> There's a good picture of that. Let's look at page in the MPB book. Let's look at page 288, top right corner of uh, page 288. The, the uh, top larger white box has the carrier fitting and underneath it, the shallower rectangular box is the trim kit or the hardware pack. That's typically your M pack. Something simple but important. When you look at a MyFab MC10L or MC10RPF, you will see either right or left cast into the fitting. Uh, some people, some competitors out there have their own mark, one, two, three, four, five, nobody knows what it is. When you look at a carrier fitting, most people don't know whether it's a right hand or a left hand, unless they're looking at the printing on the carton or unless they're, they're looking at the marking on the fitting. But we make it easy in that we, we have cast right onto the fittings, left or right. When a contractor opens up our MC100 hardware pack, he will always find, or she, that the legs are bolted to the faceplate. They don't have to take the time to do that. That's already done by us. There's also four bowl saver washers shipped with every carrier. The advantage of a bowl saver washer is after the carrier is installed and the finish wall is up, Contractors tell us that they typically have to enlarge the space around the four studs so they can spin a nut onto the stud into the wall to be their backup nut. And then they put their toilet or their fixture over the studs and then secure <clears throat> that to the studs. Well, with a, with a bowl saver washer, you spin the bowl saver washer onto the studs it goes up against the finish wall. It goes, it's, a, it's a concave design, so it goes into the wall a bit. And then you have a plastic washer over that, so we're not damaging the china. Then the toilet goes on. So there's a real advantage with bowl saver washers because they're easier to put on. And when you go to do your final adjustment of tightening the toilet to the wall, there's less chance of cracking because it's easier to get the four bowl saver washers all lined up to the same um, distance off the wall so there's no unevenness which leads to cracking. The overall depth of our carrier fittings is the most compact in the industry. Look at page 211 of the MPB book. Top left corner, page 211, MC10L slash R. <clears throat> we show a six and a half inch dimension from the back of the wall to the back of the carrier fitting, not counting the rear anchor support. That is more compact than anybody's standard carrier, typically at least a half to three quarters of an inch. In fact, years ago, we used to run advertisements in the engineering magazines promoting this, and we received so many calls from engineers that said, please don't run that ad anymore because architects are calling us saying, look, there is a carrier out there that can meet our demands. Architects are typically paid by leasable square feet. So their goal is to leave the poor plumbing designer with as little space as possible within the pipe chase because they want to make the room bigger. They want to get a bigger fee by saying there's more square footage in the, in the building and in the room. By making our carrier more compact, we're giving the plumbing engineer and the plumbing contractor more room to work within a tight space than what they're typically getting with others. We offer three different nipples at MyFab, page 206 of the MPB book. <coughs> we have the standard carrier nipple on the left, the MC10 PN831. We have the rolling thread nipple in the middle, typical to Zern in the middle, the, the uh, PN8 R-31. And then we have the nipple with the horn, uh, the PN8AH on the right, typical to Smith. And most manufacturers only offer one style of nipple. We offer all three. So depending on contractor preference, um, they, can, they can choose what they, what they want. 
Okay, MC1027, they have that auxiliary inlet on the left, which we looked at earlier. And again, the function of that is to take waste from a urinal or a lab, either beside the toilet or on the other side of the wall. And this saves space and time. Big advantage. It's, it's surprising to me that we do not sell more of these 1027s. Uh, I think most contractors just aren't aware. When I've shown this to people, a lot of them say, oh, we didn't know that that was available, but a good thing to feature. Same story with this long barrel. You get the auxiliary inlet again, which is on the left. The vent connection is on the right, the two inch. Nice long barrel that you can put one up against the other, not have to cut pipe to put between the carriers. Okay, now we get into vertical adjustable. The reason why the carrier is because we're going to have a bunch of MC10s on the left of the stack. We'll have some on the right of the stack, or maybe just all on one side or the other. And then when they go to the stack, it's the MC12 or 13 that's within the stack. <clears throat> and on the left, you see a two inch vent connection. On the right, you see a four inch pipe connection. The pipe will be connected to that. The, the same MC100 faceplate assembly bolts onto the front of this fitting. You see the, the oblong face. And then notice how we have a black rubber cap on the right. So we ship all of our MC13 um, fittings with one of these rubber caps. So it either goes on the right or the left. And that allows the installer to make this a universal vertical carrier, meaning they don't have to specify when they order, I want this carrier to receive MC10s or waste from the right or the left. It doesn't matter. We ship this with two open side inlets and then with a cap so that they can cap the side they don't need. And that's a big advantage because our competitors don't do that. They have a dedicated left, they have a dedicated right. So think about ordering and the confusion that goes on. Well, I thought I needed right, but I really need left. With us, it's easy to use in the field either way. The adjustment of the faceplate on an MC13 is just like an MC10. It goes up and down uh, the, against the, the oblong face and the fitting can go up and down. So you've got the function. Why? Because you want to adjust the toilet height to whatever height we want, which is our, our front view. But then also we want to adjust the fitting within the stack. So that's why there's a double adjustment. And the, and the MC10 are installed on either side of the MC uh, 13. And you, again, you get a good view of that on page number 217. You can see how we have the stack in the middle at the top of page 217, and there's an MC13-2. Dash two. dash 2 means two open side inlets, PF part fitting. So here's the MC13 value proposition. Same faceplate assembly as an MC10, nothing different. Same benefits as with that. This is the big difference though. We have the MC13L, the left, the right, the R, or both sides, the two, as one part. We do not have three different parts. We have three different part numbers, but we only make one actual fitting that has two open inlets with the vent cap. One fitting does it all. Lavatory carriers. The MC41 is the most common concealed arm lavatory carrier. Concealed arm because when the sink or lab goes over this, you don't see the arms. They're with we have a back-to-back, -back, the MC41D. The 41 is the most common. So here's our value proposition. Okay, there's only one set of arms needed for the MC41. We just filmed a two or three minute, maybe four minute video on the advantages of the MC41 that I believe is gonna be emailed out to everybody early next week. And that will also be posted on the MyFab University. And in that video, we talk about the three stages of adjustment, <clears throat> the header bracket, is reversible and is offset. The nipple in the arm goes in and out of the header bracket and the arm goes in and out of the nipple. So because of those three stages of adjustment, 
we only need one set of arms that gives, gives us from 16 and 3 quarters to 23 and a half inches min-max adjustment. Uh, huge advantage over our competition. Our competition typically has two or three different arm lengths. So it's kind of like back to the MC-13 where the wholesaler has to, and the contractor have to figure out, well, what fixture am I using? What arm length do I need? With my fab, unless it's ADA, you don't have to do that. There's enough range of adjustment and flexibility with our MC-41 that it does any, 99% of, of labs that are not ADA will work with our single MC-41. So simple ordering, faster installation because you can adjust it as you need to on site and everything is in one box. It really is the best packaging in our industry. Typically others, and, and you'll see this, when you walk into a, a wholesale um, warehouse that's stocking one of our competitors, you'll see different lengths arms labeled on their shelves. You'll see the, the uprights typically loose and they have to pull all these things to make the carrier. With us, everything is in one long box. So, we have a fixture carrier video on the MyFab website. T to find that, um, from the home page, you would hit the carrier section. Then you would go, for example, to MC10 or MC41. Then go to the download section, and you'll see the MC10, MC41 installation video. It's about five minutes long. Ten We're not going to look at it now, but I encourage you to look at it because it it's a very it's a still frame video and it's point by point as to how to assemble an mc41 or an mc10 so anytime you have contractors asking you know how do these things go together it's a great place to direct them to see that maybe what i'll do is i'll just um direct people to that right now off our website so let me just minimize this i'll go to our website. Let's see if I can get there. Okay, so from the home page, click on carriers, left middle. Okay, here's our MC10. So let's click on the top MC10 blue link. Then on the right hand side under the downloads heading, As we scroll down here, we are going to get to the very last one, MC10, MC41 carrier installation video. I'm not going to click on it because it's not 9 megs, but that's where it is. And before we finish, I want to highlight one other thing. <coughs> this is the shift and lift. This is a great product because in the event that the contractor has installed the MC10 or MC13 carrier too close to the finished wall at the end of the battery, at the end of the row. Typically at the end of the row, you have the ADA toilet. And ADA rules are that we need 18 inches from the finished wall to the center of the toilet. Well, maybe it's a tenant improvement job, TI job, and somebody has put tile or some other um, wall material up against the existing wall, reduce that dimension. Maybe the framer made a mistake. Maybe the plumber made a mistake. They're really in a, in a tight spot if they have a sticky inspector. So we've got this offset nipple. You can see the bottom left corner and the four offset studs. They're available in either half inch, three quarter inch, or one inch offsets, three different SKUs. And rather than having to open up the wall and rip up the legs, to physically move the carrier assembly, all we have to do is remove the toilet, remove the nipple and the four studs that are straight, and put in the shift and lift. And then you can shift the toilet either left or right, up or down, anywhere from half inch to one inch, depending on the skew that you've got. Plumbers that we've shown this to have said, oh my goodness, if, if I had known about this six months ago when I was in that jam, it would have saved me a lot of money, a lot of time. So a really great product to highlight to contractors uh, and wholesalers that you know. Okay, let's get back to the end of this.
What do I do now? Start? Uh, okay. Okay, here we go. Okay. So the top 10 reasons you can sell MyFab carriers. Number 10, <clears throat> the carrier fitting, the MC-10 carrier fitting is packed one per box for easy handling. The MC-13 and 12 are also packed one per box. All of the tappings in the carrier fittings um, are pre-greased to ensure smooth hardware installation. That's not always the case with our competition. There are three different nipple designs to suit any contractor's preference. And it's really strange. You know, you hear about contractors that say, no, I want the ball valve with a yellow handle. Well, you know, we give them a choice of three nipples. They can pick whichever one they like to work with. We have the most narrow pipe chase uh, dimension in the industry on the MC-10s as we looked at it, that six and three quarter dimension. Number six, there are bowl saver washers included with every hardware pack, so that reduces the, the opportunity to chip or crack the fixture. Number five, all the bolts that we have with our carriers have a built-in washer design, so we don't have any loose washers rattling around in the box. Number four, we have one MC13 carrier fitting, not three. We don't have a left, a right, and a two open. We just have one that has two open inlets, left and right, with a cap. So you can have all three options in one. We have all of our long barrel, long barrel carrier fittings with an auxiliary inlet. Most of our competition doesn't. That would be an extra. With us, it's standard to have the auxiliary inlet on the long barrel. This is a big one. You show this to any contractor and they'll, they'll resonate with this. We have the bolts connecting the faceplate to the legs on the front of the faceplate, not on the side of the legs. So it's just that much more easier and flexible to get at those bolts, to tighten them or loosen them, to adjust the vertical height of the toilet, which often needs to be done. And number one, of course, you can earn more money selling MyFab carriers. So thank you everybody for your attention. Have a great weekend. We're gonna open this up for some questions. Okay, it's wide open, so who's got a question? Anybody? Any, any questions out there? Hey, Michael, this is Steve with Climbing Sales. How are you? How are you, Steve? Good. Hey, uh, just got uh, kind of an issue that I've been seeing the last couple of months. I don't know if it's a bad batch or what, but I'm getting, I'm getting some big pinholes in some of my MC-10s. Have you guys heard of this? Yeah, that's not good. So let us yeah. call you on that after this so we can get into that issue. Okay, sounds good. Okay, everybody, have a great, have a great weekend. You too, Mike. And, we, and look forward to doing this. Michael. Thanks for the. Hey, Mike. Yeah.